Thunderdome Boxing Talk. All right, uh, man, I just did a video on the Adrian Broner, Sean Porter uh, fight. Possible fight, you know, whatever. Seems as though it's happening. Um, but now, and how happy I was with that fight. You know, now I got to do a video on a fight that I am not happy with at all. Uh, Deontay Wilder versus Eric Molina. Come on, man. Like, fuck. Uh, this is not a fight anybody wants to see. Like, by any stretch of the imagination, no one wants to see this fight, you know. And, and no disrespect to Eric Molina, but the guy's not even a top 20 heavyweight. You know, he's not. He's not. I don't care if the WBC has him ranked at number 12, all right. Uh, it does does not matter. You know, it's he's not the 12th best heavyweight in the world. Uh you know, computerized rankings, they go by their points, and we know that gets screwed up sometimes just by, uh, you know, the, the uh, wins, the wins and losses. Their, their point system slightly flawed, but it's better than most. Um, you know, they got Molina ranked, like, in between 40 and 50 on the computerized ranking systems, uh, whether it's, like, IBO or BoxRec or whatever. Um, I, I, come on, man. You know, you can't even fight a top 20, a top 30. I mean, maybe he's a top 30. Maybe. Uh, you know, in reality, he's probably maybe, you know, a 30-something. Uh, and that, But that's the point. That's fucking terrible, man. Uh, these are the exact same guys, D-level guys that he was fighting on the rise. And now he has a championship. The WBC heavyweight title, he has it, and he's still fighting D-level guys. Like, you, if you want an exciting American, all right, number one, you do need to get him right on the TV, all right, like they're doing. Um, you know, he's scheduled to fight in Alabama on June 13th. Uh, I believe it's a PBC event. I'm almost positive it is. <clears throat> You know, but I, I, I'm not sure. I'm just saying I'm almost positive it is, which is great uh, as, as if he's on TV and everything like that, regular TV, you know. Um, but against this kind of opponent, wh what's it saying? This is a one or two round, you know, fight that proves absolutely nothing. And once you're the champ, you can't, you know, become champ and then fight D-level fighters, man. You know, this isn't, you're not building your your career no more. All right, you're there. You can't be like, well, I'm still learning. I'm still developing. You will develop against championship fighters, you know, because you can't be a champion and use the excuse, well, I still have a lot to learn. Then you shouldn't have won the title so early. And you don't apparently need to learn that much because you're holding the title and you're saying you're the best heavyweight in the world. So... Why are you fighting D-level guys? Guys ranked somewhere in reality, like number 35, you know, 30. Um, and that's reality. I mean, you know, computerized, he's much lower than that. Uh, and that's just bad, man. Like, we have uh, an American heavyweight. I think his power was a bit overrated. I don't think it is what people thought it was. You know, it's no Mike Tyson power. It's no George Foreman power or anything like that. Or uh, Stavern would have been taken the fuck out. You know, he had a, a dead man just standing in front of him and couldn't even KO him. Um, and I, I don't, you know, maybe it was his hand was hurt. Well, we got another hand. Uh, you know, it's not like his fucking back or something where he couldn't put his weight into it. He still had another hand. Um, you know, and he was using that right. Uh you know, he should have got that guy out of there. And I'm not saying he don't have big power. He does have big power. It's just not as big as we thought. Um, but I don't like seeing him fight these kind of guys, man. I don't think anybody does. I haven't heard one person say, oh, my God, I was I wanted to see this fight. Damn, I was hoping he would pick the number 12th ranked guy to defend against. I mean, come on, man. You're literally... You're not even picking from the bottom of the top 10. You're going past the bottom of the top 10. You know, and now you're stretching into the top, the, the 15, you know, the ranked guys, which is fucking nuts. Um, 
I understand it's voluntary and you can fight, you know, anyone in the 15, but, you know, come on, man. I mean, you can really fight anybody if you want. They'll sanction it. It's the fucking WBC. <laughs> but give me a break, man. Fight anybody. You know, someone better. Just, you know, we, of course, we want the, the Tyson Fury fight. You know, or like a Glasgow, or, you know, just somebody. Somebody. Povetkin. Somebody. You know, even Chagayev. Anybody, man. Anybody who's decent. You know, preferably I would have liked to have saw the Tyson Fury fight, and then the winner fight Vlad. And then, you know, the champ just continues to fight any and everybody. You know, from one on down, just keep on knocking them out. Um, you know, that's what you should do. You shouldn't have to sit here and pick guys and things like that. Uh, look, look, Mike Tyson fights, uh, Trevor Burbank, you know, wins the, the WBC title, right? Does he go and fight, uh, you know, a WBC, you know, just ranked guy to defend against? <clears throat> no, he goes right after Bone Crusher Smith for the WBA title. All right, he goes right after another title, gets it. Uh, then he fought Pinklin Thomas, who Pinklin was like number three uh, ranked guy at the time by the WBA. Anyway, you know um, they had Tyrell Biggs and Tony Tucker uh, ahead of him, but you know, uh, and that caused a little bit of a stir back then when he fought Pinklin instead of Tony or. Uh, Tyrell, but, um, and that, that's because, you know, Tiny, T Tony Tucker, um, well, no, wait, no. Tony Tucker had the IBF heavyweight, I'm sorry, so as soon as he beats, uh, Pinklin Thomas, you know, who, which, who was a good fighter, and, you know, if you're gonna fight somebody that isn't another champion at the time, at least fight somebody in that top five of heavyweights out there, and that's exactly what Mike did, he fought the th number three guy. You know, it was basically the number three guy if you take Mike out of the equation because he was one. Um, you know. So after he beats him, what's he do then? Uh, he goes right after Tony Tucker and his IBF belt. And takes it. Then he goes right after Tyrell Biggs, the number one contender. Dusts him. I mean, you know, that's how you do it. That's I'm sorry, that's how you do it, especially in the heavyweight division, man. Like you want to make a splash. You know, it's not like, that's a division where all eyes will watch you if you're exciting. And if you're taking big fights, you can make more money than Floyd Mayweather. You know, all Deontay has to do is win, of course, and fight good opponents with names and take them out, you know, and start doing it on like PVC. Uh, that's a great way. That's damn near exactly how Tyson did it. You know, he won championship fights. He was past the TV stuff, but, you know, he made his bones on regular TV, you know, ESPN and things like that. But to get that following, but uh, Deontay can start that right now with PBC. You know, um, Molina, no, no one's going to be interested in that because Molina isn't going to, when like, when Tyson would fight a guy, and I, I always hate when, you know, uh, 78 Sports was talking about this in a video, and I commented back and forth with him about how he was saying how he hates when someone says um, Tyson's opponents were bums. Maybe like the first seven, uh, but after that, those guys got pretty fucking good, you know. And from the time, you know, to a little before he won the championship till long after it, uh, those guys would all be top five contenders. If any one of them was alive today and fighting today, they'd be a top five contender, more than likely holding a strap, if not the strap, all right? And that's that's not an exaggeration. I mean, go back and watch these guys fight. They were fucking good. You know, they were heavyweights. They were fast. They were slick. They were strong. They were athletic. They were fucking ripped. They were physically fit. Great conditioning. Um, you know, we're going to see some, you know, I, 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 you can't see a heavyweight champ step in the ring all ripped, looks great, and then you look across the corner and there's this fucking out of shape 
fucking nobody standing over there, you know? The guy is not imposing. He's not threatening. He doesn't make the fans think that just by looking at him that he has a chance. You know, when as soon as the fight's over, they're going to be like, well, yeah, I mean, look at him. Uh, you know, those that doesn't build you fans. That doesn't build excitement. That doesn't draw people into the heavyweight division or the sport. You know, Tyson Fury would take this fight in a heartbeat. He wants it. It's there. I mean, he he's he's dying for it. Um, and it's a fight Wilder can win. You know, it's a, clearly a fight Wilder can win. Fury doesn't have the greatest chin. You know, damn, plant something on him and he'll hit the canvas. You know? Is it just that uh, Wilder's, you know, afraid of getting something planted on him? You know, because, man... You know, Molina ain't nothing. Yeah, no disrespect to Molina, but he is not uh, a fighter who should be fighting for a heavyweight championship. Not yet, anyway. He, he doesn't deserve it. Flat out, he doesn't doesn't deserve it. Um, you know, that's the thing. If you're gonna, you know, not fight other champions or some top, the top, you know, three, five guys, if you're gonna pick from that bottom half of the top ten, you should never pick from outside of the top 10. You just just never, you know, um, unless the fans are dying for that fight because this dude's on the rise and he just ain't ranked yet or something, but that's rare. Um, and Molina ain't that guy anyway, you know, but if you're going to pick from the bottom of the top 10, at least like see which guy deserves it the most. Like maybe who had a shot and, you know, had a bad night or got stiffed on a scorecard before that if he would have won, would have led to a title fight. Something like that. Someone that deserves it and that, you know, is, you know, capable of giving you a fight. You know, Molina is D level, man. You know, I'm not even calling him C level. This is, he's D. Like, he's not a C level fighter. You know, there's plenty C level heavyweights that he could fight. You know, someone like, um, dude, oh my god. If you compare him to today's fighters, you know, guys like, they're B-level fighters, I guess, in today's era. Um, and he's an extremely good boxer, tremendous ba amateur background, you know, Mike Perez. Uh, he's technically like a B-level heavyweight right now, but... You know, in the histories of in the history of boxing, he's more like a C minus fighter. You know, um, the history of the heavyweight division, he's like a not e he's not even a solid C. You know, and that's what's crazy. Um, and Mike Perez is fucking light years ahead of Eric Molina. You know, you, you get what I'm saying here? Like M Molina in in the history. <laughs> If you want, I'm being nice and calling him a D-level fighter, and I don't mean it to disrespect Molina, you know, because maybe he just has to prove himself a little bit more. Uh, but you know, from what he's done so far, you know, in the history books, he's an F-level fighter. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, he, I don't think he would ever have beaten any champion ever, uh, much less you know, the top guys of any division ever. He's just not that guy, you know? So why would you even fight this dude? Um, I don't like it, you know. I understand it's, you know, they're, they're doing it in Alabama. It's going to be some, you know, homecoming showcase fight. Uh, you know, then people were like, so I heard some people say, you know, I don't like the fight, but he deserves to have an easy fight after winning the title. The fucking dude had like 40 or 30 some easy fights, uh, you know, in a row. In a row. He had, he's never even had a tough fight. Bermern, Berman Stavern was supposed to be a tough fight, but it was, it wasn't. The dude did nothing. You know, he did, so it's not like he ever had to have a tough fight. Um, damn, now you're champ, man. Go fight a fucking another champ or someone else who, you know, is right around your caliber. You know, uh, the Furies, the, the, the Chagayevs, the Povetkans, the Glasgovs, the, or, or a, I'd even be happy with a Cunningham, even though he's, uh, you know, a, a small guy. Um, it don't matter. 
you know, he's big enough. I mean, he damn near beat uh, uh, Glasgow, you know. Um, and if and if you don't think he beat Glasgow, then I mean, the fight was extremely close. Uh, so you know, fight one of them guys. You know, like Cunningham, he deserves a shot. I give him a shot. You know, I could I wouldn't complain. You know, Glasgow, give him a shot. Um, you know, I'd much, I'd much rather see the Fury fight. You know, I don't like seeing these guys just, you know, fighting anybody. Um, you know, so if you're going to fight someone, you know, go try to, you. if you're a champ, you should just be trying to unify. That's just the way I feel. You know, I, I, I feel that about every division all through boxing, you know, if you're a champ, you unify and then you start fighting any top one, two, and three guys of all, you know, your mandatories from all your titles. And that's what you do. And everyone has to earn their way to get to that number one spot and earn a fight with you. And then you just keep picking them off for as long as you can. That's how you get, you know, your name. And Wilder being an American, uh, you know, with, uh, he has, he has character, you know, not like character in the ring, like Muhammad Ali character, more like he is a character. He can, you know, talk and, uh, you know, make people want to watch him. The guy can make a ton of money if he just does it right. But you can't make a ton of money by not fighting tough fighters. You know, there's only one Floyd Mayweather. Uh, you know, that's never, that ain't happening again. You know, it's not. It's just not. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. You know, it's just not. Um, this is the heavyweight division. You know, you, you got to fight some tough fighters. Because if you're not fighting a tough fighter, uh, a good guy, a good top fighter, nine, nine times out of ten, the guy comes in 240 pounds, 30 of it is fat. You know what I mean? Uh, you can, you know, if you're a welterweight, a super middleweight, a lightweight, you know, you can bounce from division to division and find guys who you can beat, but at least they still seem threatening to the public, you know, because they look ripped, they're physically fit, they're mean, they have a backstory. But when you just get this guy who works a fucking nine to five and he's completely out of shape, you know, no, that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, do anything for the fans. They can see through that. Uh, you know, they might not be able to see through some things, but that they can clearly see through. And fighting Molina is doing nothing for Deontay's, you know, legacy. He has a fucking title now, man. This is legacy building time. Uh, this is when you start, you know, making your real bones, making your name. Uh, what's he trying to do? Sit and wait for Klitschko to retire? Is that what he's going to try to do? Just ride this out until Klitschko retires or looks, you know, horrendous? It's not like he looked fantastic in his last fight. He should be like, fuck, I want to fight him now, you know, but don't, why would you want to wait until the guy gets old? I mean, he's already old. You know, go fight him. If you can't beat him now, you could never have beat him then. You know, so it's, you know, waiting any longer, it's defeating the purpose because it's, it's kind of like, you know, Manny and Floyd bragging that they beat De La Hoya. You know, could you have done it in his prime? Probably not. You know, but it's the same fucking thing, you know, like, don't wait till the man gets old. He's still active. He's still fighting. He's still winning. Go fight him now. You know, then you got guys coming up. You know, you got your Furies, your Glasgow, your Cunninghams, your Chagayevs, your, you know, even though Mike Perez, even though Mike Perez is very fucking short, I would have rather seen Mike Perez. You know, I don't think Perez would have won just because he's at such a height deficit and he's not necessarily, you know, uh, an, an aggressive fighter. Um, he's more a boxer, he'll shoulder roll, counter punch, things like that. A lot of things that wouldn't work against, you know, a six foot seven dude, uh, but man, please. Like, I know this fight is being said that it seems it's going to be confirmed. Please don't let this fight get confirmed. You know, I, I do not want to see this fight. Uh, you know, I don't want an American heavyweight to, to, to be doing this. You know, uh, the guy, you know. I can understand if he just had some wars, a war, even one war, and he needed, you know, a layup, or he deserved a layup fight, 
But he doesn't. He's had fucking 30-some showcases in a row. I mean, dude, it's time to take a real fight. You know, and then you're going to run around and say you're the best heavyweight in the world? Well, guess what then, man? You know, you got to fight a top fucking heavyweight. Otherwise, I, you're not shit. You know, you're not shit. You just beat Berman Stavern. That's all. And that's not saying much. <laughs> like, honestly, it's not. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I already know everyone's going to feel about this fight. But let me know what you feel about this fight and, you know, the heavyweight division and any comparisons in the, throughout heavyweight history you want to make. All right, Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.